How is it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will, back down in Key West. Uh, today's episode is actually a little bit older footage, um, and the reason why, Aaron and I are actually working on something really, really cool that's going to happen in the next two weeks, so I've been a little bit distracted by that and haven't had a chance to uh, get out and do some fishing. But uh, I have some old footage of when me and Aaron went out one day, and uh, I was driving the boat for him and he was catching fish for me. So check out that footage and uh, we'll see you back here. How is it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will, we're here in Key West. Absolutely beautiful, calm, wonderful day. Reason why we're out on the boat today is because Aaron actually lost his spear gun uh, a couple of charters back. So came out to help him today, um, ran out and we actually, I dragged Aaron behind the boat and we found the spear gun. So since he found the spear gun, he did a couple of dives just since we're in the area anyway. And he just told me that he saw a big juicy lionfish. Now for you, those of you who aren't familiar with lionfish, they are invasive down here. Uh, they're a big problem because they eat everything that the other fish eat so they don't leave any food source for other fish and they just multiply and multiply and they have no predators so there's nothing to kill them so they're just absolutely prolific and really a detriment to our reef actually here comes Aaron <laughs> Not as big as I thought, but he's definitely an eater. Oh, we'll sashimi him. Plenty of fillet on there. <laughs> I'd be surprised if we didn't see another one today. All right, we'll make a little sashimi out of him. So that'll take a day just to rest, and we'll get back to it. So they're an absolutely beautiful fish, which is such a shame that they're so detrimental to the reef and our reef fish. But one thing also about them, you got to be careful in handling them because they are venomous venomous they're not poisonous poisonous means if you eat them you get poisoned venomous means that they have venom that if you get stung by any of these that's a real bad time waiting to happen um, I've actually got it in the hand my whole hand puffed up and that was through a glove so I can't even imagine getting one actually deep inside you but normally when you bring them on the boat you cut off all of these throw them in the ice bucket so that anyone going in there after you doesn't get it in the hand, which actually Aaron behind the camera has gotten also. <laughs> but, so we're gonna clean this guy up. Oh yeah. <laughs> Don't be scared. I take off literally everything out of fear. I was never timid around these things. I handled them no problem. Once I got <laughs> zapped by one, now I'm, I'm a little I'm a little skittish with them. But that's it. So everything is off. Oh, got one there. But this guy is safe to handle now that he's missing all of his weapons. It looks like when you tell a barber, you're new, a new barber, just take a little off the top. <laughs> There you go. 
So this is actually pretty funny. Um, Aaron was getting back in the water and he goes, anything else you want me to shoot for you? And I said, yeah, why not? A yellow jack. We'll have a big sashimi platter. Well, anyway, he gets back in the water and he just came up and he goes, come get me in your yellow jack. This is like having my own personal shopper. Uh, I could tell him, what else should we tell him to go and get? We're not deep enough for Wahoo, but hmm. Hopefully, this is nice. I'll just keep sending them in the water and uh, we'll get enough fish to do a really nice sashimi platter. Come get your yellow jack. Yo, sashimi shark? <laughs> perfect size. There's, I know, there's, like a, there's literally like a hundred of them. But these are like the perfect eaters. There we go. <laughs> Beautiful. So yellow jacks are absolutely an amazing, amazing sushi fish. They, a lot of times they call them the poor man's wahoo. If you've ever had zero mackerel, yellow jack, even, I mean, wahoo, it's all very similar. It's, it's nice, white, firm meat that is really clean and has barely any taste to it at all. So again, we're gonna fillet this guy up and we're gonna let it rest for a day and we're gonna make our sashimi platter tomorrow. Oh, it had row in it. Messing up, man. God, the meat on these lionfish is amazing. I mean, that's as pretty as hogfish, without a doubt. And just break through the ribs. I don't know if it'll be blown out, but that is like such incredible meat on these guys. Also not to toot my own horn here, but we still, we still got it. <laughs> All right, so underneath, we'll take the skin off. This is like cheating because this is so small. It's just perfect. And right in the center, there's a couple of pin bones that we'll take out. And then what I'm gonna do is wrap this in a paper towel. And that's gonna go in the fridge overnight. And what that does is draw out a lot of the excess water and it leaves, it actually intensifies the flavor. It makes it a little more firm, a little bit easier to slice for sashimi. Um, taking care of your fish starts the minute you catch it Brain it, bleed it, ice it, and it keeps going from there. So wrapping this in a paper towel, putting it in the fridge, is gonna make this an even better piece of fish. Now we'll get to the yellow jack. So here is our yellow jack. And one of the things about yellow jack, so right now we have an invasive species that we're gonna do sashimi, and an incredibly sustainable species. And what I mean by that, there's no size limit it's a hundred pound bag limit to yellow jack and i mean this is a small one they get absolutely huge it's an amazing tasting fish and i think every time that we're out we see massive schools of these there's no shortage of them and it really is a good alternative to something else and you fillet it the same way you would anything else
and that is also absolutely gorgeous that you can't beat that meat it is it is so so good um very important though after you catch these guys chill them down it makes filleting them so much easier i mean that came off without a problem but it firms up the skin i'm, I'm sorry it firms up the meat and makes it much much easier because these guys right off rip can be a little bit mushy and then the only other thing with them is that unlike that lionfish i keep my knife parallel with the table but i keep it a little bit above because that skin can come off very easily onto your fillet there we go now i'll cut out that bloodline just so that we're left with just the meat and the same thing these will get wrapped in a paper towel put in the fridge and then we'll cut them up tomorrow so this is all my yellow jack and lionfish <laughs> i was gonna say hogfish lionfish um have them wrapped like i said in the paper towel they sat overnight so we're gonna put those aside for right now and we're first gonna make a dipping sauce which is it looks like a lot of ingredients but it's really easy just soy sauce some sriracha half of a lemon and half of a lime a little bit of fish sauce and a little bit of honey for sweetness so all of these mixed together are gonna give you legit everything on the taste palette so it's gonna be salty tangy sour sweet spicy it's gonna have everything in it put this aside for now we're gonna bring that upstairs and give it a stir later all right so in this hand I have my yellow jack this hand the lionfish and putting that paper towel on and letting it sit overnight it's just a bit more firm so when we go to slice it and that's gorgeous if you put that on a plate in front of someone and didn't tell them it wasn't hogfish they would think it was hogfish all right, I'll put that aside and now take a look at our yellow jack, which also overnight in the paper towel, firmed up, but it also at the same time relaxed, if that makes any sense. So it makes it also very easy to slice. I mean that absolutely absolutely gorgeous all right I'm gonna slice these all up lay them out on the board and then we'll put some toppings on them
All right, we got the sashimi all cut up and all dressed. Got Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> We're heading inside, Aaron's inside. We're gonna eat some sashimi. Brought you a sashimi platter. <laughs> I was gonna go ayo, but I know no one likes it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's your your thing. Mm. All right. Can Instagram eat first? Yeah, of course. Well, YouTube's eating first. Well, hold on. <laughs> if I don't take a picture. It didn't happen. Ooh, that's true. All right. Do you want to know what you're eating? Nope. <laughs> Actually, this is. Actually, I don't. No, I'm no, gonna tell I you. Know. Okay. I know. <laughs> well, you have to know the accoutrements. Well, I want to be impressed, but all right, let it rip. All right, so these three are all yellow jack, and that is strawberry and basil. I know that sounds weird, but you've had yeah, it before. It's oh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> and then we have sumac, uh, lemon zest, and a little bit of habanero. Then we have chili oil and furikake, which is just sesame seeds and toasted nori, which is seaweed. And then sour orange zest, sesame oil, scallions, and sesame seeds. Ooh. And then our kind of spicy ponzu sauce. Ooh. So we're pretty much a no utensils house. We all know each other. I didn't wash <laughs> my hands though. Okay. So I didn't wash my hands. <laughs> well, the last I'll thing just, you did. I don't know. I'm going in on the on the <laughs> strawberry. We're all eating our own pieces. Hey, back up, bro. <laughs> Mmm. Dang it, I did the head nod. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what's the orange sauce? Whoa. I can't taste the oil. sesame good. oil. It's good. <laughs> I like that. What, Which one did you like? What's the... That, this guy. Yeah. What's the nutty flavor that I'm tasting here? Sesame oil. Oh, okay. Yes, that's good. And then this is... So dig into the lionfish, too. So the lionfish has a little bit more of a snap to it when you bite into it, but... The flavor, I mean, you could get away calling it hogfish. Oh, yeah. You definitely could. All the ingredients. Ooh, <laughs> I like that heat. Going in again. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That one's actually, I think it's my fave. So everything also has a little bit of coarse salt on top of it. That gives it a little bit of crunch. A little bit of texture, but the more I lemon zest adds like the perfect <laughs> flavor. <laughs> mm. All right, we're gonna chow down on this sashimi. Mm. Thanks for watching another episode of Cooking with Clams. If you liked it, hit like, hit subscribe, and we will see you on the next adventure. See ya. That strawberry one, though. Oof.